Welcome, welcome everybody, July 16th, 2022. And is anybody joining us for the first time who would like to just say hello and maybe mention a thing or two about yourself? I see some. I some see Joey and Graham are both here. Graham's been here a while, but I don't think he's been able to introduce himself at the mm -hmm. meetings. And also, I think Joey is new too. Yeah. Please introduce yourselves if you're willing. <clears throat> uh, I'll go first, Graham, if that's okay with you. <laughs> so, right ahead. Uh, good. My name is Joey Clavijo. I'm a deacon in the Episcopal Church. I lived in New Orleans most of my life, and I recently moved to Dallas uh, with my wife, and uh, I'm getting connected now in the Diocese of uh, Dallas. I uh, uh, was uh, uh, a member of Climate Reality in New Orleans with Peter Degree and his group, and uh, now just transitioning over to Dallas. And I'm very happy to be here, thank you. We're very happy to have you, welcome. Um, I'm Graham, and I, this is the second time I've joined the meeting, but the first time since I've been uh, since I attended the, the, the training in, in Vegas a couple of months ago, which was outstanding and phenomenal. I really enjoyed it. And I can't wait to put to use some of the, the learnings I had. Wonderful. Welcome. We're very happy to have you. There's much work to do. Put to use the stuff that I taught them. Hi, I'm Z. Hi, Z. Hi, Z. <laughs> you want to say hello, Z? Hello. I'm the person who taught your, your videography workshop last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you. We're happy to have you here. Good. Anybody else uh, that we haven't met yet who would like to say hello? I'll say hello. I'm new. Yeah, tell us, tell us about you. Uh, well, I learned about your group at the EarthX convention several months ago, so I'm just here to take it all in and learn, but my name is Lauren Cole. I'm a native Dallasite, so, uh, and I live in, in Oak Cliff. I've, uh, I work in advertising, too, and I've got a, a two-year-old and just here to take it all in and see how we can help. Good. Well, we're glad to hear you learned about us at EarthX. We put a lot of energy into that. Anybody else want to say hello? Okay, well, there'll be plenty of opportunity to talk and interact. Um, let's go into the land acknowledgement. Isabel? Good morning, everybody. Um, we want to start the year on this meeting with our Indigenous Land Acknowledgement, which is now available on our chapter website. Uh, specifically in the DFW areas, we are standing and living on the lands of stolen from the, the Kikapu, Wichita, Tawakoni, Gumanos and Comanche people who have uh, been harmed yet continue to thrive in the process of colonization and white supremacy. I encourage all of us to go to nativeland.ca and educate ourselves on these native communities. I'll post um, the link in the chat right now. Thank you, Isabel. And we'll be hearing more from Isabel a little later. Uh, wonderful. Uh, community ground rules. These are the rules that we, we meet by. Leah, you're on. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm uh, going to go through our community ground rules. So the first one is to make space or take space. Um, whenever we're talking, uh, the rule of thumb is two minutes, um, so we leave room and space for other people to um, share their ideas and thoughts as well. The second one is speak from the I perspective instead of generalizing. The third one, 
practice active listening and seek to understand. Assume good intentions, respect one's, one another's space, time, and interest. Next, be willing to be uncomfortable, be open to productive discomfort. Intent does not negate impact. And disagree without discord, personal attacks and labeling have no place in our chapter. And lastly, accept that there's no quick fix, especially when we're dealing with climate. Um, so yeah, um, those are the reminders and um, go uh, sending it back to you, Richard. Thank you, Leah. Appreciate that. Okay, Beth, uh, you're going to sort of warm us up. Interesting that you should say I'm going to warm you up because today we're going to focus on the season itself, which is warming us up. Uh, so today we first we begin by noticing the rhythmic nature of our breath. And from that, we put our focus on appreciating summer. We are taught many blessings through the light and the heat. It is the season of the most light throughout the, throughout the year. And yes, we are learning about heat, aren't we? And we also put our focus and our gratitude on all the cool water, the cool water that we put our feet in, that we swim in, shower in, and drink. We offer our gratitude to the wonderful ripe fruits and vegetables, the beautiful greens and yellows and lemons and limes and the beautiful red tomatoes and the red fruits, the ripe, juicy cherries and strawberries and raspberries and watermelon, all that touch our spirit and enliven our senses and give us the cooling energy as we learn about the light and the heat. And as we give our gratitude to all of these things, we now progress into the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Beth for putting that positive twist on <laughs> this summer. Uh, Leah, I think you're gonna work us through a small group exercise next, if you will. Yes, so uh, thank you, Richard. <laughs> I'm trying to get my screen set up. Um, yeah, so this week we're doing um, work, working group updates. And we since we have a little bit of time, um, I will put you guys into breakout groups into, I'm not quite sure how many yet, probably three to four people in one group. OK, um, and you guys will have 15 minutes. And I invite you to within that group to share what you're working on recently. And specifically, some of you probably, all of you probably, are aware of some devastating ruling coming down from the Supreme Court in the past couple of weeks um, or past four weeks, I think. Um, so the EPA um, ruling and yesterday, if you guys have not read the news, I'm sorry to be the one to break the news for you, but Senator Joe Manchin um, said he's not gonna support the climate provision bill uh, for now for now. <laughs> um, and so that can be a lot of emotions. So um, I simply want to create a space for all of you to talk about however you want to share whatever you want to share, talk about your emotions a little bit if you're willing to share that, or if this makes you angry, or if this makes you uh, furious, right? What kind of actions that you want to see in advocacy space and it could be something that we do locally because a lot of the um, scientists and activists at the federal level start now looking into, you know, the executive branch, exactly what Joe Biden can do, but at the same time, the state and local level, right? So um, it can be a emotion sharing. You can, we can curse a little bit, no one's listening, right? Um, you can share what you wanna see, or if you have resources, um, locally who already started working on some of the post 
action after the news coming out、um, yesterday. We would love to hear that too. Okay, some of these things. And then lastly, if you're like, I'm really not quite sure. I'm still in that emotional process. I'm gonna drop a link、um, of the letter to a young activist. I believe we shared this last year in one of the meetings, and this can be really encouraging. This can give you some hope. I certainly know I have this tab open up on my browser um, um, and stay open there every single day. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this link here. And give me like twenty seconds. Let me work on the breakout rooms. And we'll be giving everybody opportunities for action after this discussion. So please don't leave early. Exactly.、Uh, there we go. Now, sorry, trying to figure this thing out. There we go.、Um, and I need to make sure this is fifteen minutes. Right now, mine is set at three minutes, and that's too short. Okay. All right. So you should get a prompt to join breakout rooms, and whenever you're ready. Good morning, Lisa. So we're in breakout rooms.、Um, I can put you into one, but before I do that, I just want to let you know what we're doing in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're basically sharing our emotions、um, after、um, the EPA ruling. I think two weeks ago about the EPA.、Um, so you can do that, or if there's things,、um, there are things that you would like. Um, to take action on,、um, you can share that as well, and we'll come back to share as a big group um, um, after that. Because I want to take this、um, as an opportunity to see what you guys have in mind or what resources you're already aware of. Okay, sounds good. Okay, cool, awesome. I'm gonna put you into the breakout rooms. There we go. Okay. You're in room three. There we go. Okay. Okay, Larry and Quinn,、uh, John. I'm gonna leave you here because I want to join one of the bigger rooms. <laughs>
shoot, I just ended my, <laughs> when I saw the, the 60 second notice, I clicked on it and exited myself from my breakout room of about 45 seconds early, I guess. Darn it. Boom. I never click on anything. <laughs> I just like Zoom does itself, right? Like I can stay in the small room. But yeah, either way works. This sort of thing is happening to me more and more in my life <laughs> as I get older. Welcome back, everybody. most people let's give it a couple more seconds nice seconds okay that is everybody Ooh, okay guys welcome back so i knew i have 20 minutes on the agenda but the breakout room was 15 minutes so i left about four minutes <laughs> if you have anything to share in this big room and you can use the chat you can also um, unmute yourself. Um, any emotions, resources, actions you want to see, or however you're feeling? Uh, I have something I, I would like to share and that my uh, my breakout group friends asked me to share. And it's it's a it's a concept that 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 we're thick in the middle of change and that the old is dying out and the new is coming in. And that part of our job right now is to be hospice workers to the old, to the old way that is dying out while we are being midwives to the new that is being born. Oh, that's nice. Thank you so much, Beth. So in, in our group, Ryan actually revealed that he was a, uh, a voter registrar previously. And we talked about how that might be a really good thing to do for the 22 election coming up. So um, preliminarily, we might talk about how, we're, we're gonna look into getting information out to anybody that wants to do that. As of right now, that's, that's what I can say. Um, we talked about a little bit of stuff, but we, did, we were kind of in the middle of that when we, when we came back. So if anybody's interested in that and wants more information, uh, just contact me. I'll make sure that, that we, we connect you with the people that you need to be connected with. I'm also, a vo I just got recertified to be a voter deputy registrar, so um, I'm happy to do it whenever. I haven't picked up my materials, though. I'm slacking on that. I was going to say yeah. a, along those lines, um, I'm a voter registrar, but honestly, I haven't really registered anybody. But I do know quite a few people who are kind of squishy voters, and um I have decided that this election season, I'm going to make my list of squishy voters and I'm going to make it my mission to both persuade and turn them out. And I know we can't discuss the, my persuasion. Uh, Alex, what I mean when I say a squishy voter, somebody who is, uh, you know, not that not that into politics, not that into anything. I have a, you know, a, a work colleague who I said, have you voted yet? Have you voted yet for the runoff? He goes, yeah, I just haven't really been paying attention. And I'm like, okay, well, here's this and here's this. Now you've paid attention, go vote. And he didn't vote. <laughs> so my quest is to make him a voter, make his wife a voter and find about, I don't know. I already know off the top of my head about five other squishy voters. Um, you know, people who I know are in line with my thoughts and my issues, but just not into <laughs> politics. So I'm going to make that my mission. It might be five people. It might be 10 people. Oh, and then I'm also going to make my list of my 10 girlfriends. It's all girlfriends that we text each other every day when something ridiculous happens and make sure they do the same thing, find their squishy voters and persuade and turn them out. So lots of people getting them registered is one thing, but getting them to turn out is quite the other. And that's a long game. And we're at July 16th. So we have about four months less than four months. So if you don't feel like being a registrar, be a squishy voter turnouter, TM. That's awesome, Amy. Uh, maybe one more, anyone else wanna share? 
Yeah, I actually, uh, we were talking in our group, I would like to provide a place to have a voter, well, I'm, a voter drive. Well, I think what I'd like to do is have a little bit more of a climate um, thing, maybe even some sort of just a gathering and have tables on the street in front of my building where we can lobby for the climate and have a register a voter maybe for the youth specifically and then have a voter registration table there but make it more of maybe even we can have a, a petition which i think would be instead of just a voter drive i don't think that's as sexy or and i think a lot of times you get people to enroll but they don't always pull the trigger and vote but if we had more of a um, of a, 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 a an awareness or a, a, a petition, or because uh, I was talking to my group, I'm planning to do an installation in one of my buildings um, that I couldn't share it. I, I can share it here. It's it's like this guy who was National Geographic photographer who goes around uh, uh, on the side from his regular National Geographic job. Um, uh, Ameriguns, ha having people display their guns, uh, and he just came out with a book. He also does it with children and their toys. But I approached Recycle Revolution to do some an installation like that with things that you can't recycle. And so, if we leave that up, and then maybe have kind of a community uh, uh, awareness, or people can take pictures in front of it, or whatever, we can also maybe coincide it with a registration and a petition. So that's what I'm offering. And I can put that in the chat. I couldn't before in the breakout room because it was limited, but I guess I'll try it now. Is that good? Cool. Thank you, Lisa. I see Richard and our event committee taking notes. So that's good. <laughs> we might see something happening. Um, well, thanks, everybody. And um, we can continue the conversation. Meanwhile, if you have any ideas, thoughts, actions, resources, please pass away, uh, pass, pass it down to us. <laughs> and um, we will share it with the entire chapter. It's still early for me. You will see why in about 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Leah, I do have one more thing to share. Uh, we've got a speaker coming up on Thursday who specifically works with using the arts for voter registration. And I'm gonna be talking a little more about that in just a couple minutes. Cool, awesome. Can't wait to hear about it. Um, I'm gonna pass it back to Richard. Thanks everybody. Good, thank you, Leah. Okay, uh, quite a few work group and committee updates today and I've posted the agenda multiple times in the in the chat if you haven't seen it. Um, so the first is the education committee update. Roger, could you tell us about that? You're on mute, Roger. Roger, you're on mute. Is is screen sharing enabled? Uh, I'm imagining Pradeep is on here. You can try and find out. <laughs> yep, you should be able to share. <laughs> okay, we'll try it. There we go. So uh, I I I I did not uh, coordinate this with Leah. So um, this is. Uh, this is my version of the same thing that Leah started with. Uh, I was going to say, uh, in the context of what's going on in the education committee, um, and and uh, where we're going, that the news since the chapter met last time has not been good. Uh, we've already talked about the the EPA decision. Um, the Guardian said this condemns everyone alive, and of course, the Times this morning uh, announced Biden conceding defeat uh, to Mansion. And, and we all know that the context within which this is, this is happening is that um, the readings at Mount Aloha just keep coming, keep going up. This is the most recent uh, graph from NOAA showing that the, the monthly average for last month was over 420 parts per minute. And so one of the reactions that, that I wanted to bring to that, um, not knowing we were going to discuss it in the breakout groups, comes from Audrey Lord. 
many of you many of you will know Audre Lorde as a a writer, a poet, a warrior activist uh, raging against bigotry, uh, known as really I I knew her, encountered her work as in the context of, of third wave feminism in the early 90s. She was diagnosed with terminal cancer and, and kept writing. And this little piece, A Burst of Light from Audre Lorde was part of her response. I want to live the rest of my life, however long or short, with as much sweetness as I can decently manage, loving all the people I love, and doing as much as I can of the work I still have to do. I'm going to write fire until it comes out of my ears, my eyes, my nose holes everywhere, until it's every breath I breathe. I'm gonna go out like a fucking meteor. In that context, we've made a decision to change the book in the Book of the Month Club that the education group is doing. I had announced a title earlier, but we're going to read for August Britt Ray's book, Generation Dread, Finding Purpose in an Age of Climate Crisis. We'll discuss this book on the 3rd of August, starting at seven, uh, based on feedback from some people who came to the July meeting. I'm, I'm gonna extend the, the discussion to an hour and a half uh, I put the Zoom link here. You can find it on the Discord channel, also on our website. You're, of course, not required to read the book to join the discussion. This is very much a book about the emotional side of being a climate activist and the things that we all need to do to sustain ourselves, uh, to do the work that we still have to do in the time that we have to do it. Um, and... Uh, very much in the spirit of Audre Lorde, uh, hoping we will all uh, plan to go out like fucking meteors. A second thing, and I'll, I'll stop my share there, but please come. Uh, the discussion was very rich uh, in, in uh, our first attempt at this. Um, so I would love to have as many of you as, as possible. And I, I think everyone, as Leah started off saying, uh, has to be struggling with, uh, with the news from the past month. This is a book that speaks directly to that. Um, Jeffrey Pulis has been uh, raving about this. He's going to lead the discussion for us. Would love to have you there. The yeah. other thing that we're going right. to be doing uh, is that uh, I'm going to be working with um, Alex in particular on presentations. But um, for anyone who is new to the chapter, if you have never given a presentation, uh, and uh, this is particularly for trained leaders who have been introduced to Gore's presentation and the climate reality model of presentations. Would love to have you join those meetings. If you just want to attend, you're new and, and you don't know yet about the climate reality approach to giving presentations to the public, uh, would, would welcome your participation as well. I'd like you to get in touch with me. Just drop your name in the chat and just say presentations along with your name, I'll get in touch with you and let you know when, uh, when we're gonna be doing this. Um, this will be a version of the workshops that I did earlier in the year, uh, but would love to see more of you getting out and giving public presentations. Um, so those things are coming from the education committee and I'll leave it there, Richard, and hand it back to you. Thank you, Roger. Alex, uh, I think you're going to give us a quick update from the faith-based group and a litter cleanup coming maybe next week. Is it next week? No, it's the weekend after that. Oh, you're, making weekend. Me pan you're making me panic, Richard. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the faith-based group, we've been meeting, we've switched our meetings from um, every other month to every month now. So we're actually meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. virtually if anybody wants to join us. Um, but yeah, so part of 
coming from the faith-based standpoint, we really want to do some community service. And so our other Haley, Haley Cotty, who is unable to come to the Saturday morning meetings because she actually leads litter cleanups and yogas on Saturday mornings. Um, she's with Explore More DFW. And so we're organizing a cleanup that will be happening. And I know this is going to be a little warm, guys, but it'll be Saturday, July 30th. Um, it's going to be an Oak Cliff Park or Oak Cliff Nature Preserve, I think. Um, so Lauren, if you're interested, feel free to bring the kiddos or whoever. Um, yeah, so we'll be meeting. It'll be an afternoon cleanup. And the idea is that we may or may not also be doing a happy hour afterwards um, at Oak Cliff Brewing Co. Um, I do believe they have outdoor seating for COVID protocols. So I'm going to double check on that. Um, but yeah, so it's going to kind of be equal parts community service and then also kind of a chance to in the faith-based world, we could call it fellowship, but just just meet with the community and talk to people amongst each other, those kinds of things. So yeah, we'll be sending out more information about that at a later time, but yeah, it'll be happening at, I believe, 6 p.m. on Saturday, July 30th. Thank you, Alex. Back to you, Richard. Appreciate it. Okay, Beth. From the creatives group, I think you want to talk to us about a special speaker and maybe some other things even. I think you're on mute at the moment. Still muted. There you yeah. are. You tried to unmute me when I was unmuting me, so I got muted again. That pesky button. Okay. Uh, yes, we have a uh, special speaker uh, coming this Thursday. Yes, it's the creatives group, but it's it's really topical, I think, for, for everybody. Um, the gentleman's name is Pete Cronowit, and he just did the training in Las Vegas. And while he was there, he met our very own Alex. And he said he wanted to be connected to our creatives group. Alex came back, got his information to me. I reached out to him. We had a very lively uh, conversation. And frankly, he really rather turned my head upside down about the role of the arts in activism. So I'm used to individual artists or a, making something, creating something, or a small group of artists making something, and then hoping that it will get out there to people for all of the sensations that come up in the presence of art. What Pete does is he has created a formula. And in this formula, he has uh, organizations, established organizations that connect with some kind of art. Now he's a musician and his thing is voter registration. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how he does it. We're not gonna quite be able to do it his way. Uh, but what he does is he chooses somebody who is running for office that he wants to back. Obviously that's what we can't do. He gets together with them at their rallies He's a musician, he brings his band, they do about three songs. After They do a song, and then after the song, they have a call to action. And they flash on the big screens, QR codes. And the QR codes either take people to a place where they can register to vote, or they take people to a place where they can give donations to whatever cause or political person they're rallying for. He says that they have had tremendous success in doing this. Um, it has made me think in what ways, when you're working with the, the combining of different organizations, of course, is you now have all of the membership lists uh, and email lists of several organizations instead of just one. So you go beyond the people that you're always talking to. And it made me wonder if, if we could utilize this for any of our environmental agendas, whether it be solar or plant or plastic or voter registration. So he's gonna come and talk to us this Thursday at 6.30 
And, uh, and I told him, we're going to ask you questions. We, we want to ask you questions about how we might be able to use this blending. And, and I have to tell you, the blending with other arts groups is probably going to be beyond our very small group of artists in our creatives group. But for example, if we wanted to reach young people, we might choose uh, uh, another organization that works with voter registration and a local band that's, that's very popular. That's the kind of work that he does. It's this interdisciplinary combination where you can reach more people than you normally do in what you do. Let me see if there's other information I need to tell you about. This coming Thursday, July 21st, 6.30. The session will last between an hour and an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, and he uses a slideshow and he's really proud of that and feels that we climate reality people will really appreciate that. Uh, RSVPs are helpful for him in his planning. They're not necessary, but they are helpful. A couple of you have told me that you're planning on coming. So if you do know that you want to come, let me know in the chat, email me. I will be posting the Zoom link on Discord. I'll be sending it to the people on the creatives list. Um, and you can email me at, I'm Beth Bando. You can email me at bandobeth at gmail. Um, let's see, there was another note, Our RSVs, I, th I think that's it. I think that's it. I mean, I, it feels to me that this could be a game changer. And maybe it's just for me. Maybe it's for the group. Maybe we'll go, you know, it's a great idea, but we don't see how it can work for us. But we will have new information coming in for us to consider. So Thursday, 6.30. Hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Okay, the next uh, session is uh, a work, a potential work group. Jeffrey, I think you want to talk about a potential Fort Worth Tarrant County working group. Yes, thank you, Richard. <clears throat> um, I've, I've been talking to different members of our group and uh, found out that some of them actually are located over on the west side of our uh, area in Tarrant County and Fort Worth. And uh, it always seemed to me that, uh, you know, driving for 45 minutes to an hour over to Dallas to attend something of climate reality didn't make a lot of climate centered sense. <laughs> um, and uh, started thinking that maybe we need to develop a working group um, that would be focused more on Fort Worth and Tarrant counties and uh, cities in Tarrant County. Uh, this is just at a very birthing stage of this. Um, uh, my plans are to have people contact me with the best way to get back to them and then set up a, uh, a Zoom meeting to just talk about what people would be interested in doing um, as part of a Fort Worth uh, Tarrant County working group. So that it's, you could be part of the initial planning of uh, building a, such a group. Uh, and you can get in touch with me. Probably the best way to get in touch with me is to email me uh, it's at jeffrey.pulis at yahoo.com. That's it. Thank you, Jeffrey. Good. Okay. Our next uh, session is uh, the business working group talking about the climate boot camp. And I attended that a couple of months ago. It was fantastic trying to convince some of my colleagues at UT Southwestern in sustainability to attend that now. But Michael, you have the floor. Well, Richard, you attended that with about 1,200 other climate reality leaders. And I want to tell you that we have just been overwhelmed with opportunity 
And I'm warning everybody on this call that we need more help because we have more opportunities to carry that forward than we can staff. But let me explain for the people who are new on this, what this is with the really short uh, explanation. Uh, a couple of years ago, we looked at the results we were having and we said climate reality has been very successful at creating awareness. Over 66% of the voters of the US know we have a climate crisis but we've not been so successful at causing action. So we started working on what would cause action. We had psychologists advise us on how do we get people out of their doom paralysis into taking action. We talked to Native Americans about the concept of the little big, that even an ant, when it works together with the other ants, can change the landscape that you individually know people you can talk to personally in your business, in your city or whatever, and help them know more. Because what we find out is the surveys show even major corporations, only 13% say they have people who understand sustainability. So we created with 38 speakers from all over the world, a very innovative education process that gives a summary, not only of, of what you can do, but how to get other people and other organizations to get engaged with that. So we had 500 alumni at Harvard take it in the beta. We just had 1200 uh, climate leaders take it. We had one week on the hub, we had 3,200 registrations. We need help on a lot of different areas. We need help both with continuing to evolve our content. And I, I want to warn you, I'm going to talk about where we need help. And then I'm going to ask people to volunteer to help us do it. Because I won't mention the name of someone that I got as an expert advisor who is an ex-chairman who said, oh, here's somebody be great to help you with that. I don't want to blow anybody's cover. So I'm not going to mention any names. But I have a list, and like my mother used to say, don't make me come up there and get you. So we need volunteers, and let me tell you what we're working on. We want to put the program on over and over and over again for the climate leaders who want to take it. So we want to turn it into a continuous program. With that, we need small group moderators who will lead small group discussions. The LA chapter has come to us and said they want to target businesses in LA as a prototype to roll it out in the National Business Working Group across the US to target businesses, churches, not-for-profits. And I'm not going to mention that there are people who are engaged in faith-based organizations that could help us get in, in churches or even people who know other chapters like New Orleans that could help get other chapters to do this. We've got branding help coming out of LA, which is gonna be the university system of California. Some of the representatives there helping us do a branding. We've got a team in Lisbon that's gonna take this to Europe and we're working on starting to launch it in Europe. We've got a new team in India that's starting to work on launching this in India. We need help with people that can help us improve our tracks. There are different things you know, I won't mention that we, we really would like to do a better job on building business cases, helping people know how to build the business case for their business. But we have a whole range of tracks. We want to add agriculture. We want to add oceans. Um, and then there's the ongoing technical maintenance of the e-workbook. We need help with, with somebody, one or two people who are just willing to help us technically and I can't tell you exactly how many people of the 1,200 went how far in the workbook because we need statistical help. Do we have the tool set, but we need somebody who could help read the, the statistics and say, oh, we're losing people at this part or losing people at that part. This is a program that every time we offer it, we are overwhelmed with people who want to take it. People want to know how can I go back in my organization and make a difference. And we're trying to give them the intellectual ammunition. Dallas is the home chapter. 
We need help from people in Dallas. And I know we have the skills. I know we have marketing people who could help us market this more broadly. But I think you get the drift. We have the resources to do this and to make a real change in our organization. So, so that's it. And I'm, you, everybody knows how to reach me, but I'll put it in my chat in case you can't wait to volunteer. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Michael, and much kudos for your phenomenal program. It re really is incredible. Good, next we're gonna talk about plant-based solutions. Rebecca, are you gonna talk to us for a few minutes? Yes, hey everybody. Um, I started the plant-based solutions working group a few months ago, and I'd still say we're in the beginning stages of trying to feel out how the group is going to form. Um, there's been no collective project as yet. Um, I know that there's several people in the group who are doing their own individual items. Um, so still trying to brainstorm how it is we can come together. And if it's only just a meeting to talk about that, then maybe that's what it looks like. But um, I'll share a few things. There's a couple of um, get your hand dirty opportunities of actually working in, there's two community gardens, one here in Dallas and one in South Dallas. Um, so if you're somebody who just enjoys volunteering or working in a garden, pulling weeds, um, planting, we have two of those opportunities that I will post in Discord when I have the finalized times on that. But one is going to be July 31st, I think around 5 p.m. And then the one in South Dallas will be, um, I think, in the fall time. But so I'll post that. Um, there's a lot of upcoming legislation to support. Um, oh, I think I've posted, we, we sent out an email about one of them, um, the, the idea about introducing plant-based diets. I think they're gonna be studying it in New York and just kind of getting data on that. So that's one call to action. If you're somebody who um, is comfortable with emailing your legislators or sorry, your representatives um, to support and co-sponsor that bill. But the big one that's coming up is in 2023, there is going to be a new farm bill. It happens every five years. There is so much um, push this year for regenerative agriculture. And I'm actually just picking back off of what the Chicago chapter is doing. Roger introduced me to the Chicago chapter and man, are they organized around this topic. They have an entire working group just on regenerative agriculture. Um, the Dallas group, you know, the plant-based group is the closest we have to that, but um, several organizations, 350, uh, even Sierra Club is actually about to come out with their own um, recommendation for this bill and for regenerative agriculture practices to make a giant push. So if this is something of interest to you, it's in the beginning stages right now, climate reality needs to catch up and, and they know and um, the, the Chicago chapter is reaching out to all chapters to try and come together to collectively come up with a one large uh, recommendation list to go alongside Sunrise 350, etc. Um, so th if this is of interest of you, please let me know these these conversations are happening now and it's really this is a big one. This is really important and I'll post about that as we continue to go. Um, let's see, what else did I want to mention? Um, oh, there was a, um, if you guys are wanting to start a, a community garden in your area, maybe uh, Alex and I talked about faith-based working group at a church. If you're a member of a church and you don't have a community garden, or maybe you're in the neighborhood, I have identified an organization that is here to help provide the resources, the funding, the coaching. You just have to have the want to do it. Um, if this is something that's been on your mind or you have somebody else in your community that you know is looking to grow something in a, or in a unused space, I will put that link in the chat here, but it's called Grow North Texas. And um, the, the women there that are running it are really great and really excited to get some food planted for communities um, that, that are currently not being underserved. Um, oh, and the Rebecca, last, one, sorry, what was the name of that organization? Grow North Texas. Okay. I'll put do you also in. know about restorative farms? I do know about them. Yes. Okay. 
they're a great organization too. Grow North Texas is, um, it's more like for coaching. Um, so they allow you to, uh, you come to get and you say, hey, I really want to do this. I have this plot of land. Um, our, our community garden in our neighborhood is on a church plot that's just an unused patch of grass. They come in and they say, here's your orchard trees. Here's your um, resources, any videos you need. Here's a horticulturist you can consult. Um, and if you are in these specific boundaries, here's some money to buy some soil. So it just has to be that you just have the want to do it. Awesome. Um, and then the last thing I was gonna mention is I will um, organize a new, meeting I'll, i might wait till uh august september um and i want to do it in person at somewhere like bonton farms maybe where we can collectively get together and uh enjoy a coffee in a garden and just continue to talk collaboratively collaboratively you know what i'm trying to say um about the different things that we could be doing um and yeah just share more about how to make a difference in the plant-based sector of it all so that's my time. Thank you, Rebecca. We appreciate the work you're doing and your energy and your knowledge. Uh, the last work group and committee update is actually uh, Molly Rook emailed me yesterday or Thursday, and uh, she's the chair of the energy working group uh, within our chapter. And so let me read you what uh, Molly wrote to me, she's been very busy with family and personal things. Um, so she wasn't able to make this meeting. Uh, the update on the Greening Dallas ISD project of the Energy Working Group is that we have been told that Dallas ISD will be establishing a standing environment and sustainability committee starting in August. It will start where the temporary committee left off over a year and a half ago. Thanks to all who worked with our efforts with petitions, as well as persistent contacts with trustees and staff. It worked. There's much to do to get the school district and others in this region to rapidly make the changes needed. More details will be coming in the next weeks about this and how to get involved. And you could see some of the work that encapsulates that on Dallas, greeningdallasisd.org. Some of us have been helping Molly, uh, I believe Rebecca and Haley Accord and myself. So uh, please take a look at that. Okay, so that's our work group and committee updates. We do have some pretty big announcements, so don't, don't tune out. We've got a we've we've got a few important announcements. So I will turn it over to Leah for the first uh, announcement on leadership transitions. Well, thank you, Richard. Sorry, I just run up uh, downstairs because I think my internet wasn't really quite stable upstairs. So that's why you see different backgrounds. <laughs> um, Okay, guys, thanks so much for staying. Um, so there are a couple of transition coming up. Sorry about my fridge, because it's very <laughs> a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, but there's a Black Lives Matter thing. Um, so I want to take this opportunity to formally um, introduce Amy. Um, she has agreed to join the publicity um, as the publicity chair earlier this year, but I don't think we had a chance to formally introduce her. And also, Amy, you're on deck next, but um, also I want to um, introduce Haley as well. So Haley has joined um, the exact team as the co-chair of the social media and communication chair. So um, I'll give the two of them some opportunity to introduce themselves, how to connect with you guys. And if you guys have anything, please use your talent and their superpowers. So um, Amy, you go first. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Amy Hunt, and I joined about a year ago. And uh, in my role as publicity chair, my job is to try to get the Climate Reality DFW chapter some publicity. 
Um, and one of the ways I'm doing that also is through the writing group where we're trying to get some uh, editorials published in the Dallas Morning News, among other places. Um, thus far, we're at O, o for one on both of those efforts, but we'll keep trying. Um, I'm always looking, I have a background in public relations, so I'm always looking for a story that we can pitch. And um, to that end, I'm, I'm going to be in touch again with the big box solar folks and the um, the what used to be called Climate Boot Camp Group and is now Eco Actus. But if you guys can think of anything else that you think would make for a good news story that could shine a little bit of light on us, uh, please let me know. I'll put my email address in the um, chat. But my name's Amy Hunt, and it's Amy Hunt at swbell.net. So if you have any thoughts, please let me know. I have a flexible work schedule and can usually work in a phone or Zoom call during the day. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. So happy to have her here. So everybody use her talent. Uh, Haley, you go first. Uh, later. Second. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Leah. I am Haley. I am now the vice chair of social media. And something that we are working on right now is we're doing the Plastic Free July, which is a global initiative um, where we're just informing the public and social media audience how to um, reduce their plastic use and you know give them some more eco-friendly alternatives that they can incorporate into their daily routine. So we have a hygiene products edition that we did, and then we're gonna do beauty products, which I just posted as well. And I'm gonna link the Climate Reality Instagram into the chat in case you guys aren't following, you guys should follow. And if there's anything that you guys um, want, like ideas that you guys think would be great for the audience to be informed on or any updates or, um, events that you guys want us to post, then please let me know. You can reach out to me via Discord or through email. And um, yeah, just the primary thing for social media is we're wanting to inform our audience. We wanna engage our audience and we wanna recruit our audience to really mobilize them into the climate movement and get them to participate and know what we're about. So anything you guys want to reach out to me for, please do it through either Discord, email, and I will be more than happy to listen to all your ideas, to your feedback, and to post any events or anything else that you guys um, would like me to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Haley. And I also want to just uh, piggyback on that. A lot of times, like people really want engagement. Um, we want engagement on social media. And one of the things to engage people is to publicize what you guys are doing, right? So even if you just have a meeting, um, and you took a screenshot of Zoom or you went out to pick up litters, like those are really good materials for promoting our chapter, getting visibility um, on social media. So don't feel like, oh, this is not a lot of achievement. It doesn't worth the attention. It does. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank I you, Amy. A, I took a quick picture of the meeting group and just so people can kind of get an idea of what these meetings look like too and see all the people who are participating and are involved with it. I feel like, yeah, like Leah was saying, it's kind of underestimated to see how how much it pulls people in to see how people are getting involved, how we're having conversations, how we're meeting up in person or even virtually. So, okay, good for mentioning that, Leah. Absolutely, thank you so much, Haley. And shout out to Alex to pull Haley up um, on the letter of engagement. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then my last update um, in the leadership positions are um, is that so starting from next month, Simon will be your chapter chair. I will be stepping down. Um, the reason is not that I don't love you guys. I love working with you guys, but Jeff and I have moved out of states. And so it's only fair for someone locally to lead you guys and understand the area a little bit better. But don't worry. I'll still be around. So if you need anything until the end of the year, um, I'm always here. And Jeff is currently our membership um, chair. So he is looking for someone <laughs> who can take over that um, um, position. So I'm going to give Jeff one minute um, to talk about this. 
Uh, thanks, Leah. Hey, everyone. So uh, it, it's definitely been a great journey, you know, just serving on the uh, executive leadership team and being able to interact with all of you guys. Um, we can definitely still do that, um, but probably more virtual now, unless, you know, we, we visit Texas um, sometime near the future. Um, so yeah, for membership, um, yeah, please, you know, if you, if you're interested or just want to give, give it a shot, um, definitely contact me or any exact team members. We, we definitely, uh, could use your help. And again, just trying to reiterate this message, you know, over and over again, um, we, we have built a very, um, profound community, at least in my opinion, you know, we, we went from, I don't know, five, five or six people uh, in 2018 on monthly meeting. Now we have 30 plus. So, you know, obviously we're doing something right. We're doing, we're, we're built, we've built a community that people enjoy being here. However, uh, we're all powered by volunteer um, work, you know, hundred percent. And that is not a given, something that's a given, you know, we, we have to continuously to have people who continue to, need to get involved, to step up and uh, just to help our chapter work. Otherwise, um, you know, it, it's not a given. We, we probably won't be in the position we are in today. So, um, and just want to encourage everyone, you know, if you don't feel like, hey, exactly. Member, uh, leadership being a membership chair chapter is for you. There are also a lot of, um, <clears throat> different types of chapter work, you know, being working group leader or just even join the working group or taking on an initiative. We, you know, you guys are all heard about the working group update. We have no shortage of work. In fact, we probably have two to three times more work that we can handle now as a chapter. So um, please definitely step up. And if you're curious about what the day to day is like, you know, as the executive me membership, chair or other position, um, feel free to reach out. Um, we're here to help you and answer any questions uh, like we always do. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, so Simon, do you want to speak to the chapter? <laughs> Uh, absolutely. I, I first want to say that Leah has done absolutely fantastic. Uh, Leah, Leah and Roger both were amazing chairs. They are they are the benchmark that I've got and it's really, really high. So I'm going to do my best. Um, but but honestly, like we, we don't need to get too caught up, I think, with with that and with titles because everybody is very active in the chapter. We have the most we have the largest, most active chapter in in Texas. And it's it's amazing, and I'm I'm just really happy to be part of it. And we have a lot to um, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, real quick, uh, since since I have like a second, I do want to say this. So we have now a Discord channel for the voter registration network, which we are putting together. If you are a voter registrar and you are not Amy Hunt, Amy King, Ryan, or Roger, then I don't know, and I need you to tell me that so I can add that role to you. So the, uh, the elections are coming up November 8th. Mail-in registration needs to be postmarked 30 days before. We're gonna call that October 8th because I haven't actually looked at a calendar. Um, so we have a few opportunities coming up to get people registered before then. So that is what I'm gonna focus on for the rest of this year. If you are a registrar, let me know so I can add you to that role. If you want to become one, go in the channel. We're posting resources. We're going to organize around that. This is what we're doing with, with the registration. And I think it's really urgent based on everything that's happening right now that Roger already talked about with, with just everything. So thank you. Cool, thanks, Simon. Um, I think that's a wrap on my portion. Um, back to you, Richard. Thank you. We, uh, we appreciate you stepping up, Simon, and we're very thankful for the tremendous contribution that Leah and Jeff have made over the years. We wish you the best. We look forward to seeing you at a few more meetings, but um, Simon will support you as, as best we can. Um, okay, so uh, Jeff talked a little about um, people stepping up and we'll need a membership chair. 
Um, Alex is going to talk for a few minutes about uh, we'll have elections pretty soon for next next calendar year. Uh, she's going to talk to us for a few minutes about that and then uh, the oil and gas leasing program as well. So Alex, the floor is yours. Thank you, Richard. And yeah, Jeff pretty much took care of my first talking point for me. So thanks, Jeff. Um, but yeah, so like Richard was saying, we'll be having chapter elections coming up. Um, I think nominations start in September, right? And then we have elections in October. Leah, correct me if I'm wrong. That's what we said, right? Okay, yeah. So the cool thing about our elections is that if you're really interested in learning more about a specific leadership position or um, you, you're interested in taking part, um, you don't necessarily have to do it all on your own. We have the co-vice chairs, the co-chairs for a reason. So obviously, prior to Leah um, stepping down, myself and Simon were the co-vice chairs because we realized that it's kind of one of those roles that could really benefit from having a couple of people kind of taking over that. And so if there's a position that you're interested in, but you don't know if you could take it all on yourself, we can definitely work on finding help with um, either a co-chair system or a co-vice chair system. Or if you're just interested in learning more about what a role does, you are more than welcome to say that you're interested in it. We will happily pull you in. Um, that's what Leah and Roger did for me. That's what I did to Haley. And so we are no stranger to finding ways to help you get involved in leadership positions. So, but like Jeff was saying, we are a volunteer run organization. None of us are getting paid to do this. And so our chapter and the success that we have had and the good work that we have done in our community and nationally all relies on our people power. It all relies on all of you um, and the work that you've done. So A, thank you for that. And B, let's not get tired. Let's keep up the good work. Let's keep getting involved in leadership positions, whatever you, whatever strengths, whatever climate superpowers you bring to the table, we need those. And so don't be shy. I was unsure about being co-vice chair because I didn't think I had enough experience, but Leah was like, no, no, you're fine. And she kind of yanked me in. So we can, there's, don't be, don't be afraid and don't be shy. It's all good. Um, and related to some of the work that we have been doing, um, I have two announcements related to potential ways to take action that I was talking about earlier. Um, the first, for those of you who are not aware, we've been involved in a local campaign called GAF's Gotta Go. It's a local environmental justice campaign. It's related to the GAF asphalt shingle plant located in West Dallas off of Singleton Boulevard. Um, we've been part of Singleton United's campaign, um, working on getting them shut down so they'll stop polluting that community. They're a very heavy polluter in that community and it's a predominantly black and Hispanic community. So environmental justice is a central theme there. Um, so they actually just met with GAF for like national GAF representatives the other night um, because GAF has heard them and heard you know the talk they've been having. They've been published on KERA and um, a few other local news sources. If you wanna read more of those, maybe we can find some way to drop those in the link or in the chat. Um, so they did meet with GAP representatives and GAP has said that they are agreeing to wind down operations over the next seven years, which is a good sign. However, they have not said when they will actually stop producing. They just said they're winding down and seven years is a long time for these communities who have lived with the pollution for, I think this place was created in 1947, I believe. So it's been around the block a minute and it's done a lot of damage. And so they want to get them shut down as quickly as possible. So they're also looking at amortizing through the um, city of Dallas, which is a really complicated legal thing. I can't, I don't want to break it down right now. Um, but basically they're trying to see if that's a faster way to get them shut down. So they're still working with GAF. They're working with their city councilmen um, related to that, but kind of keep an eye out. And if they ask us to do any actions for them, because we are part of the campaign, I will send out an email with ways to take action, whether that's contacting city council members or whatever Singleton United needs from us, we'll kind of um, let you know so we can take action for that. And then the other opportunity for action. So long story short, um, the Trump administration had created a leasing agreement for different offshore oil and gas drilling in the United States. The Biden administration has changed that because they're trying to condense it down to places that already have drilling in place because originally um, more places that had not yet been drilled were open. Um, Biden administration has condensed that down. However, they are looking at Alaska and the Gulf of Mexico um, for potential drilling options. And so we all know that fossil fuels need to stay in the ground if we're gonna stop climate change. So this is obviously not an option. 
There is, however, another option that is a no drilling option. And that's the one that we're wanting to go towards. And so we are going to be rallying around that cause. Um, keep an eye out in your emails. They will have, um, it's called the Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management, BOEM, it's what I've been calling them in my mind. Um, but they're through the Department of the Interior and they will be asking for public comments on multiple days in August. And then there's also a chance to submit public comments through their um, website. And so we will be doing that. I've already reached out to Houston Air Alliance, um, the New Orleans chapter, Austin chapters, Houston chapters, and San Antonio chapters, as well as um, Climate Reality National, specifically their Southeast um, Justice Representative. And so we're all moving on this and it's looking like DFW is kind of leading the charge for now. And so I'm gonna need all of your help when it comes to submitting those public comments and getting our voices heard about how we can't be drilling in the Gulf, like this needs to not happen. So keep your eyes out for the email about ways to make that happen. And that's all I've got. Richard, back to you. Thank you, Alex. Well, Beth did a wonderful job of warming us up, I think. Uh, Isabel is going to talk to us for a few minutes. Maybe you're going to cool us down, Isabel. So please take the floor. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, and um, I wanted to share something that I read about Ernest Hemingway. Now is no time to think of what you don't have. Think of what you can do with what there is. Um, <clears throat> like with everything that's been going on, I think this quote like really hit me, like don't focus on what you can change. Actually, if you, if you want to make change and if you want to improve something and if you want to make, see things become better, then work with what you have and, and take the opportunity to, um, to use what we actually have to make the change. So this is what I wanted to share with everybody <clears throat> and hope it's useful for everybody and hope everybody has a great rest of their weekends. Thank you, Isabel. Great. Well, that brings us to the end of our meeting. Amazingly, we actually finished a few minutes early. A few of us will stay on if anybody has questions or comments. Um, you might, if you haven't had a chance, save the chat. There's been a lot of conversation in the chat uh, and lots of links and, and information to follow up on. So unless anybody has anything else quickly to say, I think that's a wrap for uh, July. I have a quick question. If anybody, does anybody have any connections to the Rotary Clubs at all? Please let me know. I know uh, John Quinn was talking about Rotary. He's very involved. If he's still with us, um, He's, His name he's a, popped up. I just wanted to make sure that there was a lot of chat, you know, in case somebody missed it. Yeah, John Quinn. Um, and uh, I don't know if, uh, yeah, he's still there. He may not be, but we can connect you with John Quincy. You could hook me up. We'll wow. Hook you, we'll hook you up. Because that's a, the kind of people you are. He's a, he's a Rotarian. So anybody else? Have Hi, are you still there? Still here, John. Still there? Yes, still here, John. I don't okay, know we'll, if you can hear us. Yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you connected, Z. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Richard, um, I got in late, so is this meeting recorded? I'll be able to see what I missed. Yes, there's, I a, guess. there's a record of everything we have said and done. Um, I guess I, thank this you. Is John, yeah. I, are you still there? I'm driving. Yeah, okay. so John, I will, since we have limited time, I will connect you with Z. Um, 
But yeah, I just, I have one last thing to say, guys. So next um, Saturday, we have a chapter yoga on Zoom. Uh, again, this is an opportunity for all of you co to connect and just move around a little bit. Yo yogis one bite. Um, so if you want to join me, um, it's Saturday at 10 a.m. Central time and it's 8 a.m. for me. So that's why you heard my stammers and stutters because it's still early for me. So come to yoga next Saturday. Great. Thank you, Leah. Okay. Well, everybody stay well, cool. You know, I joined just a, a 10 minutes later. So, but did anybody give a, a shout out to Z for her video training and the library for, it was awesome. Z, it, it was, was great. so awesome. I learned so much. So much and so okay. that I didn't know. Thank you. Was, thank you, Z. <laughs> and thank you, Leah. Thank you for everything. No, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Um, I I learned so much from you guys. Literally, I told Al Gore this last month in Las Vegas, and I continue to um, hammer down the points. Right, we're all volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Simon's a volunteer. Roger's a volunteer. Everybody's a volunteer. So it takes all of us um, to run the chapter. It takes all of us to find different places to find activism. And I. I said that on the state on the stage in Las Vegas, and I'll continue to say that. So I'm not going away, but please consider stepping up um, for the chapter because the chapter will go away if no one steps up, <laughs> right? So that's what I'm doing in Portland. I'm in Oregon right now, and I already reached out to many community groups here already, and I'm I'm ready to start that. And I hope um, this chapter. I think we're in a good shape, but please step up because we need more help. Um, um, in our chapter. Okay, great. Well, everybody stay cool. Thank you for the work you do. We'll see you next month. And a few of us will stay on if there's any further questions or comments or issues. Uh, have a great rest of July and we'll see you in August. Bye bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming, y'all.